Welcome back to this video podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this recording, we review the key features of chylomicron formation and fat absorption that you will need to know for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. And so I don't really have any interest in lymphatics, quite frankly. I care about how lymphatics is a gateway drug, <laughs> uh, like marijuana, uh, to lipids and infections via the M cells. So that's really where we're going with this. But the key thing about the thoracic duct, you got these transport of chylomicrons going through the lymphatic. And so that brings us to what the hell is a chylomicron. And are you guys all good with these things, you know, chylomicron? Does it just roll right off your tongue? Is it like automatic in for the class of 2020? Sure isn't for me. So I just thought we would take a moment to make a chylomicron. And again, they go into the lymphatics because they're big and they can't fit into the capillaries. So let's make one, and this is it. So we'll start off, we ate the hamburger, we ate something fatty, bacon, gastric lipase, alveolar lipase, big deal, it doesn't do anything. We chomp on the thing and you get this triglyceride fat globule that gets now into our intestine. And does anyone grow tomatoes and ever get these tomato worms? They're disgusting, and I hate them, and they have the eggs of a certain kind of wasp on them, but they look actually like bile salt to me. It doesn't look the same. So we have these tomato worms that attach to these triglyceride fat globules for purposes of emulsification, okay? And that's what they do. So fat with tomato worms become water-soluble, and this is a simple mycel. We just made our first mycel together as a class, and we just call it simple because there's not a lot of action there. It's not complex. This slide then is a little complex. So we have these little simple myceles and in the setting of pancreatic enzymes, now colipase, which neutralizes things so lipase can work and raises the pH. We have phospholipase, cholesterol esterase, you have other things working on the digestion of these triglycerides. And this is the craziest damn thing now, right? So they get digested, so the bile salts are still there and the digested product of our simple myceal becomes a mixed myceal because the triglycerides are now free fatty acids is monoglycerides, cholesterol, phospholipids, fat-soluble vitamins, and still with tomato worms. And the worms bring it right to the surface of the enterocyte where they get absorbed. But now this is called a mixed mycel. Simple because it's just triglyceride fat and mixed when it's broken into these little components, okay? Well, this is just crazy. Watch what happens here. So look, so the mixed mycel, cholesterol, free fatty acids, monoglycerides, they're absorbed passively across the intestinal surface, and the worms go back in the portal circulation to the liver. Do you prefer calling them worms or bile salts? <laughs> Call them whatever you want, but on the boards, I'm pretty sure they're going to be called tomato worms. So they go back. They're out of the picture now. And so now you've got this mixed mycel, so you can absorb these damn things in the intestine. And look. It goes into the endoplasmic reticulum and it's made back into triglycerides. That's the stupidest damn thing I ever saw. And now the triglyceride goes through the Golgi and they go on ahead and combine the triglyceride and the cholesterol and the phospholipids. And now they put this little protein around it, this apolipoprotein that's going to be important for certainly passage into the lacteal because it won't leave there without the apolipoprotein. So it's basically reconstituted. And that's what a chylomicron is. So it's just trigs, cholesterol, phospholipids with this lining of apolipoprotein. All right, good. What are the thoughts to ponder? So, as I said, now, because it's going to the thoracic duct and getting dumped into the circulation, it's not going in the portal vein right to the liver. It's going into the systemic circulation, and then that's how it's going to get to the liver, and, and that's going to be the role of lipoprotein lipase. And so we just did a chylomicron, and we didn't even talk about lipoprotein lipase. We're going to talk about lipoprotein lipase when we do cholesterol. So in cardiology, we'll pick up the chylomicron story. So we'll probably see the worms and everything later on. That's the chylomicron. And look at, at what happened here. To absorb it, we had bile salts, check. Pancreatic enzymes had neutralized, so lipase and colipase, check. And you had enterocytes. You need enterocytes to absorb fats. So later on, we get to malabsorption. If you don't have enterocytes, you're going to get fat malabsorption, uh, steatorrhea. That's the process of fat absorption, chylomicron synthesis. So let's review that garble again. What are the necessary components to absorb fats? To form the simple mycel, we need bile salts. So fat malabsorption may result from diseases that deplete bile salts. The common players are cirrhosis from any cause, but the prototypes are usually cystic fibrosis or primary biliary cirrhosis. Obstruction to flow of bile can lead to diarrhea, but on the boards, those conditions will present with other symptoms, namely jaundice. The major cause for bile salt deficiency with resultant fat malabsorption 
is Crohn's disease, specifically knocking out the terminal ileum, which leads to failure of the enterohepatic circulation of bile. So this is step one in the absorption of fats and a physiologic approach to understanding fat malabsorption. Recall, while we're in the neighborhood, that bile release from the gallbladder is stimulated by cholecystokinin, which, in turn, is stimulated by the eye cells of the intestine upon contact with the fat. The next player involved in fat absorption is the pancreas. The pancreas releases both lipase and colipase, with the function of colipase being to neutralize the pH so that lipase may hydrolyze fats. Specifically, lipase digests triglycerides into monoglycerides and fatty acids, which then become components of mixed micelles. In terms of fat malabsorption and the deficiency states, pancreatic failure is top two in your differential diagnosis. Pancreatic failure will be described by a predisposing factor such as cystic fibrosis or alcohol use. The patient with chronic pancreatitis will be further identified by calcifications described as opacities in the mid-epigastrium. So we've seen bile, the liver, and now the pancreas involved in fat absorption. And in fact, the result of the first two steps has resulted in the creation of a mixed mycele. As already described, the mixed mycele includes those monoglycerides and fatty acids, plus cholesterol, phospholipids, and the fat-soluble vitamins. The mycele is formed when these components become surrounded by the hydrophobic ends of bile salts. The mixed mycele is now delivered to the enterocyte surface. And the final step involves transport and reconstitution of fats into the chylomicron within the enterocyte. Insofar as diseases of enterocyte deficiency, these are covered in the malabsorption video previously presented. That video covered Giardia, celiac disease, and Whipple disease. And here is the process in summary. In the first part of the video, we heard the recorded lecture on synthesis of chylomicrons. In the second portion, I essentially reiterated the steps as fat absorption is exceedingly important and exceedingly complicated. In a separate video, we will cover fat-soluble vitamins as well as the ultimate fate of chylomicrons once they enter the circulation. And that concludes this discussion of chylomicron synthesis and fat absorption for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days in March. Thank you.